ladies and gentlemen on behalf of extra mural lectures team at iit madras i take great pleasure to extend a hearty welcome to mr s gurumurthy a well known commentator on economics and politics and a leading corporate advisor in india he is an acclaimed writer who has penned to thought provoking articles in several dailies and periodicals across the country many of his articles highlighted the disadvantages of globalization a chartered accountant by training his outstanding knowledge of economics and accounting unconventional economic thinking and his powerful personality have, have had immense influence over the corporate india after completing his ca in 1972 he joined an auditing firm and man maintained the books of some of the companies owned by ramnath goenka in 1976 he started his own firm guru and vardhan mr guru murthy has been rated among the 50 most powerful persons in india in 1990 by gentleman magazine as the eighth most powerful person by business peran magazine in 2004 17th most powerful person by india today magazine in 2005 a question of debate is india really in crisis is looked at with totally different perspective by mr guru murthy his unmatched ability to understand the global economic architecture and present it in a simple manner will inspire all of us to look at our national economy in a totally different vision may i now request dean professor alice ganesh to present mr gurumurthy with a food basket without taking any more time i request mr gurumurthy to enter the stage and enlighten us with his thoughts respected faculty and students of this great institution and friends in fact when i was traveling i told mr vinod who is known to me for a long time that somewhere i have lost interest in talking addressing meetings I said I will be spending about three hours totally from the time I started from my office till I go back, and I was thinking in these three hours I could have produced a very instructive article which could be read by a few thousand people. And when you read an article, your capacity to retain is much more than if I address a meeting. and this is after about 20 25 years of experience in interacting with audiences so as a writer i feel that i could do more justice to what i am thinking what i want to communicate than as a speaker so you can understand that it is with some reservation i always address audiences but this is a topic of some importance with which i had very very intimate relationship in investigating exposing and personally risking myself i will take you back to 1986 when i started investigating black money it was in the context of a rising black economy at that time but of course the size of it has nothing to do with the kind of uh, black money that is in circulation today with a lot of legitimacy at that time black money was not legitimate today it is almost legitimate so when i started exposing black deeds which lead to creation of black money i thought that we should do something to action our uh, action a solution not merely uh, Say theoretically that black money is created like this, and what should the government do? You know, at that time, we in Indian Express had uh, a great urge. For example, in um, the Morina area in India, which is the place where three states meet: Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and Uttar Pradesh. Women were being bought and sold. New item came. We decided that the only way we can arouse the conscience of the nation is to actually buy a woman. We went and bought a woman. The come 
entire episode completely shrink the country. So solutions are sometimes needed, but by actually you are getting into the act to prove what is happening and suggest a solution. So Indian Express, we did many things, Varun Shuri, me. I was very fortunate to be part of a very, very uh, motivated team of highly patriotic people. So it is in that spirit when we began exposing the black deeds of the Reliance Group. And we know that uh, the credibility wrong things were acquiring. You know, the transition that, has, that was beginning to take place at that time, unless we set that context, we will not be able to understand what should be our responses. You know, so long as the society recognizes the wrong thing as the wrong thing, the society is safe, the country is safe, the economy is safe. But when the society begins celebrating or accepting and then celebrating wrong things as success, then there is a very serious problem for the society, for the country, for the people, for the economy. At that time, wrong things were being accepted as something inevitable. You have to do it. It was at that time we began exposing this. And in the context of that investigation, when I went abroad, I went to Switzerland. Then I had a talk with the bankers. What is the kind of black money that uh, Indians will have here? And in their private talk, there are good people everywhere. The figure that they mentioned simply stunned me. It was 1986, they said it is something like 300 billion dollars. I couldn't believe. 300 billion dollars in 1986 was some money which uh, maybe Europe and America put together could not have thought of as a liquid money in their hands. Such a huge amount. You know the GDP of America at the time in 1986 was about 2.5 trillion dollars. And a cash resource of 300 billion dollar is unthinkable for an economy of 2.5 trillion dollars. So then I decided that we should do something about it. But I had a discussion with two great civil servants. One, Vinod Pandey, who was the revenue secretary at the time. And one, Mr. Borelang, very honest. I mean, they are the epitome of honesty. Borelang is still alive. And I asked them, how do we do more about it? Because if you have to expose it, you are going to do something out of the way. I told them that you make some changes in your, you know, the government always rewards some people who give information about some tax evasion or whatever. I said you uh, do a notification by which you, anyone who gives some clue which will lead to the discovery of some amount that is uh, Indian money that is lying outside, 25% of it will be given to the informant. So that circular notification was issued. On the strength of that notification, I contacted one detective agency by name Fairfax. And uh, one Hirschman was heading it. And I told him, I have no money to give you. And I give you this notification. Let's assume you unearth 10 uh, million dollars. You get 200 million dollars. I don't think this kind of uh, bonus any deal can give you then he took that assignment but I was not so much experienced at that time that the information could reach the target and if the target they are not going to reveal who they were and only one known target and that was Rams and maybe had other targets also but when the information reached the persons who were the target they forged a letter against me that I was really investigating Rajiv Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi and that was a forged letter on the basis of which I was arrested on the 13th of March 1987. Borelal was transferred on the 9th of March. V.P. Singh was transferred as a finance minister 
on the 25th of january itself by which time they have already come to know that something was happening under the leadership of ep singh the whole operation collapsed on my arrest and i was charged with espionage trying to steal the country secrets of the country from the government and passing it on to foreign detective agencies like fairfax why i want to tell you is brahmani is a monster at that time it was a small monster today it is huge but i am going to reveal to you the secret world of unaccounted money you will be stunned as to how we are going to face this challenge and the world economy itself is really under its effect so the same thought which i am trying to give you is there is something which requires very determined people to fight and uh, because of my conviction because of my motivation because of the team spirit with which we operated we definitely made a move but that was scotched of course i was released the court intervened and asked for the original of the forged letter it was only a cut and paste uh, photocopy they couldn't produce the original and the person who was supposed to have signed it he issued a denial and he came on the uh, uh, newspapers to say that this whole thing is a hopeless forgery so the court released me after 10 days which made me an all india figure this was the only advantage i got out of the whole thing it would be called an advantage so as soon as i came out of the cba confinement the media asked me now mr gurumurthy you have become so popular what are you going to do i say i don't know what am i going to do with this popularity but there are people i went to kalapani in uh, in andamans you can't go there and come back as a normal man hundreds of people have died 20 years 25 years in that place nobody's name is known so i told the media people have died like this their name is not known at all 10 days the cbi disturbed me and i have become a national figure and i think this popularity is not worth it then i came and discussed with mr boyanka what is happening everybody is asking for my interview i am on the cover i am from a village i am not able to handle this popularity what will i do he told me guru you are facing the biggest challenge in your life I said, "It's all right, but how to face that challenge?" You know, he told me three things which has helped me till today, and I would like because many of you may become popular, powerful, rich. How to handle this? There is no training model, and so he told me that Mahatma Gandhi's popularity moves died in 1923 after the non-cooperation movement was withdrawn by him after the Chauri Chowra incident. You must have known in Chauri Chowra, 14 policemen were killed, and so Ma, since it ended in violence, Mahatma Gandhi withdrew a movement which was about to succeed, and so the congressmen got so upset with Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi became a hated figure. So the BBC interviewed Mahatma Gandhi. Mr. Gandhi, it seems popularity has left you. What's your answer? Singh Gandhi ji said, "Popularity comes without invitation and goes without farewell." <laughs> so, Mr. Goenka told me, "Don't trust this philosophically and practically." That guided my whole life. Why I am saying this is that when you take up a cause, naturally people will will celebrate you. And there are people who have become celebrities in recent times also, but they don't know how to handle this popularity. They must read Mahatma Gandhi. Otherwise, they can't. Even popularity is the most difficult thing to handle. You can conceal your money, you can conceal your beauty also by wearing a veil, but how to conceal popularity? So that certainly gave me the capacity to. Digest popularity transformed into some kind of strength for me to continue to carry on this work. If you are to continue to carry on a work which you have undertaken for yourself, you should not be benefited by anything that comes out of it, including popularity. This is what I learned. 
Now I will go into, I think I have spoken too much about uh, myself. I will tell you now, this issue of black money came quite fortuitously by some Swiss bank, Swiss Bankers Association saying that some 1.4 trillion dollar of Indian money is there in Switzerland. It set off a huge debate in India and it was taken up by the uh, BJP at the time that uh, this is something on which the government should do something and uh, so much money is there, we always thought that there is something and we never knew the extent to which this money, Indian money has been stashed away. Then Jairam Ramesh is a figment of imagination. I mean he speaks very good English. In India who speak good English are considered to be intellectuals. <laughs> Nonsense. What is this? 1.4 trillion dollar of Indian money? And then the issue was becoming bigger by the day. Then the Prime Minister said, no, no, we will look into it. If there is nothing, why should we look into it? Then in Bangalore, then the BJP took it up. You see, after all, opposition party has to do something, it will trouble the ruling party. So, the BJP declared that we will unearth and bring this black money. So, Sonia Gandhi was addressing the Mangalore uh, Congress workers. She said, if we come back to power, if we come to power, we will ensure that black money is stashed away abroad or brought back. You must, I want you to remember all this as I am going to talk more. So then it became an issue because the opposition also says there is black money. All these endeavors lost their meaning when global financial integrity, a non-profit organization seeking transparency in global finance came out with a report. It said that between 1948 and 2008, $462 billion of Indian money had been stashed away. This completely answered all the uh, doubting promises. Whether Indian money of that size and kind could have gone abroad. And it said something more. That it did not happen in this period of 60 years. Two thirds of it was stashed away after 1991, after globalization and liberalization, out of this 462 billion dollars, almost 313 billion dollars was stashed away after 1991. That means more liberalization, more black money. And now, very recently, the Global Financial Integrity came out with yet another report between 2002 and 2011, I mean, it takes us very near to the date of this government, 343 billion dollars was stashed away in this period. Just nine years. And 85 billion dollars in 2011 alone. How many people in India have even read this? We are all very intelligent people and we IITMs are supposed to understand the country's problems better. We are very sharp, intelligent, we are going to head different institutions in and out of India and every country is concerned about it. It's not black money, it's not only the concern of India, India is concerned more because the impact on India is worse. Every country has concern about it, which I will come and tell you how the G20 nations are actually waging a war and a failing war. It will only be a, any kind of uh, uh, possible success even after 10 years. But in India, the kind of consciousness we must have about this issue, the awareness, the inquisitiveness, the concern, nobody even knows these facts. So that billions and billions of dollars are, are 
of Indian money are stashed away abroad and getting stashed away abroad every day is happening till today. Unreliable. What is the impact? We will come to later. It, it doesn't require great research to say what is the impact. If money is stolen away from your house, what is the impact? If it impoverished to that extent. It doesn't have impact. The uh, impact of black money on the Indian economy is of two kinds. One, the local black money. This is a traditional black money. <laughs> now, we are dealing with a modern black money. In the modern black money, draws the blood out of India. If one dollar goes out to that extent, the GDP of India goes down. Because it's very simple. How do you create black money? You over invoice your imports, under invoice your exports. If there are more imports, your GDP is hit. If the money that you have to receive on your exports you don't receive, then also your GDP goes down. If you have to get money from MRIs, I'll tell you, tell them, come on, uh, you give me the money outside, I will pay you cash inside India. Then, there are two kinds of black money created, local black money and modern black money outside. These are the kind of impact that black money dealings create. Two things are clear. The local black money still circulates within India and it may even get employed and produce GDP, employment, taxes. But the black money outside is not just tax evasion but a treason for a country like India. So we cannot throw these two monies as the same. And I am going to concentrate more on the monies which are stashed away abroad. And global financial integrity says 72% of the monies, black monies generated in India are stashed away outside India. Only 28% is kept in India. And of course it circulates, as I told you, it creates consumption, it creates you may buy land, you may invest it in real estate, some other employment, or you can spend it on marriage, whatever it is, it is there in India. It does economic functions. But the money that is stashed away abroad is an economic reason. Now, when the debate came, political system was trying to duck the debate. No, 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 we are creating a task force to handle this. You know what a task force means. The task force will begin calling for reports from everybody and then all departments, the election is just four months away. All that they have to do is that they are doing something till the elections. And the government, except to show that they are doing something, they did nothing. I am talking about 2009, January. Until the election, they were pretending that something was happening and they did nothing. And what they did afterwards also is important. Then, people who felt that this is a great national disaster, it's a great prejudice to the country and to the economy and to the people. And on the one hand, we are inviting FDI. You know, what is the total FDI that would have come into India? It is far outweighed by the flow outside through this route. For example, 85 billion dollars is the amount of money stashed away abroad in 2011. The amount of FDI that had come into India is not even one-fourth. So all this FDI has no meaning if you are going to allow this leak or loot. So, people went to court. The Supreme Court said something very, very strong as to how this is really, I want to read out that part as to what the Supreme Court said about this issue. It is not just tax evasion, but theft and plunder. This is what the Supreme Court said. I, we want the government to do something, you know, by that time, not only this global financial integrity report, but in Lexton's time, the German government bribed a bank employee 
the German government's tax department bribed a bank employee and got hold of a CD consisting of the names of the taxi riders who had kept money in the bank from Germany, from France, from India, from everywhere. And when the minister began auctioning from the street that we have got our taxi riders caught, anyone who wants these details, please ask. The government of India was not asking. <laughs> Everybody was asking all the details. So our people had to go to court to tell the court, please tell the government to ask for the details. <laughs> then the court asked, why are you not asking for the details? Sir, we have asked for the details. Where have you asked? We have asked for the details under the tax treaty between India and Germany. What is the difference? When they were allowing you to get the details across the table, you are asking them under a tax treaty which mandates you to keep the information secret. <laughs> so the open information was converted into a secret information. So I said, we, anyhow, we have applied for this under a tax treaty. And so whatever information German gives, we have to keep it confidential. We cannot even show it to the court. Can you find a greater dishonesty? Don't you think that they want to conceal either themselves or some of their friends or collaborators? This is the issue on which some half party must have been formed and revolted, not over electricity bills. <laughs> and see what this uh, Global Financial Integrity says. It says not that the Indians want to avoid tax. The tax rates are very, very comfortable in India. For people who have high income, India is not a highly taxed country. Your tax rate is 33% today. It says the tax evasion from 1948 to 2008, India lost in easy financial flows through tax evasion, corruption, bribery, kickbacks and criminal activities. This is what has generated money abroad simply because that your tax rate is higher, people are not shifting their income. And global financial integrity went one step further and said the idea of stashing the money away is to conceal the ownership of the money. So who will conceal the ownership of the money? Only when it is stolen money. Or bribery, corruption, illegal activities, crime, gun running, murder. This is the kind of money which will prevent you from owning the money. So this is the overall picture and ultimately it affected the security of India and there is a terror link. And M.K. Narayan, <coughs> who was the National Security Advisor in his speech link between the world of finance and terrorism at Munich Security Conference on 22nd February 2007 much before all these exposures were coming out he said <coughs> the possibility of terror funds coming through financial markets he said is real and many instances come to notice of the income tax department of questionable share purchase and sale transactions through questionable entities run by questionable people and it all the inquiries have been stopped. This he said that at, at that time. And then there is another aspect also to national security. letter written by the Solicitor General of India in conference to the Supreme Court judge who was inquiring into this case. He writes Hasanali about whom I will come and explain later that the Hasanali case could happen in this country and there was not 
any reaction in this country of the kind which should have been normal. That my reaction is abnormal, that I will go into later. But in that case, the solicitor general writes, Hasanali is absconding Pune based businessman, could be charged under various national security laws. A top official involved in investigation told the ET Economic Times on condition of anonymity. Solicitor General Bhopal Subramanian in a confidential issue letter to the Finance Minister Pranam Mukherjee, which was made available to the court, has emphasized that the matter of Adhan Ali may be examined from the point of view of national security. Subramanian gave his opinion with regard to the red petition filed in the court in 2009. Investigators had seized the notarized affidavit signed by Adhan Ali, which contains references to the financial transaction related to overseas accounts which I will come to later. So it is not just economic impact. It impacts on security. It extends to terrorism. Because you cannot pay uh, anybody by check. Office is not to conceal. Most of these terror operations by which explosives are bought and landed here, people are financed, all these things take place through these routes. And unless you have very clear way of monitoring, controlling, preventing and punishing people who are handlers of money, you can't prevent handling of guns, explosives. All this means money. Where does that money come? It comes through this. So just to say the impact is on the economy is an understatement. So much more serious issues are involved in this blackmail issue. Now, <clears throat> how did this black money issue become a global issue? It became a global issue because of the 2008 financial meltdown. So long as everything was going hunky-dory, black money was fueling national development, global economic development, global financial markets, the rest was very happy. Of course, somebody is suffering, Africa is suffering, Asia is suffering, India is suffering. They are very happy. Because their markets are going up, their businesses are doing well. Then, that crashed. The whole assumption of modern financial capitalism was questioned by the collapse of the financial markets at that time. And of course, that's a big, big topic, different topic. I'm not going to get into it except to state that in June 2009, The Economist magazine came out with a cover story. How modern economic theory has melted away. And said the economic assumptions, theories, principles, policies, based on Nobel Prize winning economic theories have been harmful and has destroyed the very foundation of economic thinking. In fact, today the world is without an economic theory. There is no economic theory today. Everybody is hoping that the failed theory will succeed. That is the basis of economics today. And I am going to reveal numbers too which will shake you. What modern economics has done and how this kind of money has become the foundation of modern economics. It is no more an output or a slip or a leakage from modern economics. This is the drive of modern economics and I am going to prove to you with figures. Then you will understand how development or policies based on this model cannot prevent generation of black money in 2010. On 1st of April, the G20 nations assembled. Two days before that, a day before that, Sarkozy said, unless we tax heavens, or restrain, control, regulated, prevented, destroy, modern the capitalism or the principles of capitalism will not work. So, Germans supported, Americans did not know what to do. Because, the entire modern financial capitalism rests on financial secrecy. Confidentiality in financial matter 
is the foundation of financial capitalism. Transparency is just for word's sake. Financial secrecy is important. So the question becomes that unless in this meeting you are going to pass resolutions to bring restrictions or tax havens, we are not going to participate, we will walk out of the meeting. This was the first major explosion against black money because German and France were really rattled by the kind of tax leakages which they were facing. And ultimately Obama had to give in. And that is how the global war, whatever you call it, the regulatory war against tax haven started. You may want to know what is tax haven. Tax haven countries are small countries. Four of them recognize the AAA tax haven countries. It is not AAA uh, government securities, the golden securities, like that. AAA tax haven countries, very reliable tax haven countries, a population of less than one lakh. They give you all assurances. Nobody can open your bank account. Nobody can ask who is the owner of this company. Nobody can ask who is the shareholder of this company. And there is no tax. So they will give you just an address. And in one room there will be 5,000 companies. And one chartered accountant or a company secretary will be managing it. And his whole function is secretarial. And this company will open bank accounts and operate and it is a very legitimate transaction because it is a limited company operated by some people and there is a secrecy which is guaranteed by the law of the land. What kind of secrecy? You must have heard a suicide silent. I will read out the law which they had passed. Republic of Seychelles had passed a law. This is a tax haven. Tax haven countries have such laws. For example, in Panama, there is a company which is uh, invested in India, 100 million dollars. The investment director wants to know who is the director of that company. It sends its official to inquire in Panama who is the director of this company. The law says he should be arrested. <laughs> Panama law says if anyone comes to inquire who is a director or a shareholder of a particular company registered in Panama, that is a, an economic offense. You will be arrested. You know there are, you know, every company has shares. If you want a share in a company, it will be in your name. There are banner share companies. The shares are issued in the name of the banner. And anyone who keeps the shares becomes the owner. This kind of secrecies, and it goes further, farthest. That's what I'm going to read out to you. In late 1995, the government of Seychelles Islands enacted an innocent sounding law called Economic Development Act. You please note this word. <laughs> Economic Development Act. One of its provisions offers for foreigners who invest more than 10 million immunity from prosecution for all criminal offenses. <laughs> <laughs> the state ensures that no law can no, this is not a law which can be changed just like that this law cannot be can only be changed by a national referendum it is not that some other party can come and say this is a bad law we will change, no national referendum and the constitution amendment is needed to change the law this is the kind of tax events which have been created in the last 30, 40 years. 50, 60 tax events like this with varying degrees of rainbow protection which they give to these, I don't want to use a harsher word than saying these great offenders against humanity. And this is part of modern economic theories. You must allow this. Then only capital will be formed, then only production will be there, then only employment will be there. And how it helps, I am going to give the numbers to you, which will make you feel how huge the problem is. I don't know, I am a chartered accountant, I am very good at understanding the figures. 
and telling, I don't know how many of you will like the figures to be so massively distributed to you. You know, in the year 1997, the world market, world GDP was 30 billion dollars. The world market capitalization was 19.6 billion dollars. And the high net worth individuals, those who are having more than a million dollars, the to their total wealth is 5.6 trillion dollars, sorry, 30 trillion in the world GDP, 6 trillion was the high net worth individual's wealth and the market capitalization was 19.6 trillion dollars, 6 high net worth individuals approximately, 19.6 the market capitalization, 30 trillion dollars is the world GDP, see how things move later, in 2004 World GDP is 41 trillion. World market capitalization approximately 37 trillion. High net worth individuals 31 trillion. In 2007, world GDP 55 trillion. Market capitalization 61 trillion. High net worth individuals 41 trillion. I will give the latest figures. The current GDP is 71.8 trillion, market capitalization is 63 trillion, high net worth individuals 56 trillion. Out of which 21 trillion is invested offshore through these tax havens. You know who are the funds? How did this money come? Through what transaction? What economic activity? This is what was questioned by France and Germany. And they wanted a legislation, an international exchange of information, certain uniform regulations, money laundering provisions, everyone came into being. But you know, the Economist magazine in a recent article said it is stunning that even after these international regulations have been put in place, the tax havens are flourishing. So what is it international? No one country can fight this, but every country must fight it. America is fighting, even small countries are fighting. I will tell you the success stories of countries which have fought successfully against black money. Just not big countries, of course America is a big country, it can fight because it has a lot of political and geopolitical, military, financial clout. Philippines, 18 years they pursued Marcos's wealth, 624 billion dollars, million dollars they were able to bring back. Then Peru, it required 118 million dollars. Nigeria recovered 500, 505 million dollars. Tunisia, very small country, it was able to prevent if some because some ruler was trying to run away with the money people went to appeal to the uh, Swiss banks please stop this man from withdrawing the Swiss banks did now I will tell you what we are doing I mentioned you about Hassan Ali case how many of you heard this name so many have heard this name how many of you know the facts so Hassan Ali seems to be more famous than the facts he has brought out. <laughs> you know the Hassan Ali case is a classic case. On the 2nd of January, accidentally the Maharashtra police raids him and find that he was using fake passports. Then immediately the income tax department raided him and got word of a document which showed that he was maintaining or in his name a bank account is being maintained in which 8 billion dollars is found. I am going to, this is a copy of the bank account, these are available, this is in the enforcement director, these are available in the entire media. The account is Andras 
to Hazanali. See the instructions. It is so small, I find it difficult to read. Account number withheld. Identification withheld. Client details withheld. Withheld. But who is Hazanali? He is not the client. It's so explicit. The bank addresses the letter to Hassan Ali and says, the client, not Hassan Ali. Hassan Ali is just in the name. Post box. You can keep your post box without your name. That is what some bookmakers have done. So it says, the client can withdraw part of the amount 6 billion dollars he can withdraw today and 2 billion dollars he can withdraw by 15th January after 8 days that means the entire amount is liquid money then the income tax department got so terrified they invited the enforcement director you come and take over these documents and Hassan Ali runs away he goes goes and hides in a hospital. Instructions are issued, don't touch as an He's not touched, he's walking around. And the media is publishing his photographs, he's having a morning walk with his dog. And there's a man selling eight billion dollars, where has the money gone? And he's going to quarantine the money. It is a secret money on the face of the document. The client name is withheld, the account is withheld, all particulars are withheld. It is addressed to Hassan Ali, Hassan Ali is only a post box, everything is hidden. Nothing happens to Hassan Ali. The enforcement director issues a show cause notice after two years. Please Mr. Hassan Ali show cause why I should not act against you. They should have taken this money in possession. Because the man has no means, he was just a dealer in horse and he was also dealing in cars and he was disclosing an income of 15, 20 lakhs to the income tax department obviously this man is a money launderer it doesn't require great evidence to tell a court in, in Switzerland that this is a money which can be grabbed just like that 8 billion dollars is not a small amount 8 billion dollars in today's value is almost 50,000 crores Nothing happens. And Hazan Ali is walking. And the people went to the Supreme Court. What are you doing? Then the Supreme Court asked, what are you doing? The enforcement director. Enforcement director said, we are inquiring into it. Supreme Court told them, arrest him. And then they arrest him. Then some court gives him bail. Then they go to the Supreme Court and say, they are, hey, can you believe? <laughs> Unless someone high up is at risk this cannot happen and I am going to read out to you how the Maharashtra a police official such an honest person he interrogated Hassan Ali and made him agree that he had met Ahmad Patel the political advisor to the Prime Minister or the political advisor to Sonia Gandhi and Maharashtra Chief Minister Maharashtra Home Minister, all are there in the opening of the new hotel. This entire hotel has become a new hotel. In that, what all they discussed, how he was hiding. And the fellow kept on saying the police secretly videographed the whole thing. And their officer was suspended and transferred. And he went to the court. And the Supreme Court said, you cannot come directly. You go to CAD, there is a law. And the man is in distress even today. And now I will tell you about Hassan Ali's money. What is that money? You have heard of Hassan Ali Khashoggi? Khashoggi was the greatest gun runner in the history of the world. In every war, whether it is Iraq war or Iran war or LTT, and his name figures in the assassination of Rajiv Gandhi. And the man who helped introduce 
Hasan Ali to open the bank account was Adnan Khashoggi. It's all record. The Egyptians made this finance associated with many wrong things. And then, Adnan Khashoggi connection from 1982. The Egyptians have evidence that Ali had first opened his account with UBS Singapore through Retro Hartman of UBS Singapore. The recommendation was organized through Adnan Khashoggi. It means that from 1982, Ali was associated with Adnan Khashoggi. Then, thereafter, PTVI, portfolio manager of Khashoggi, virtually took over the fund manager as the fund manager of Khashoggi, Ali. Now, Ali receives 300 million from Khashoggi as funds from weapon cell. It is there, bank entry. And Swiss banks froze this, this transaction. And these, these Khashoggi people went and appealed and got that lifted. They made new facing. And now, UBS is a very respectable bank. So the UBS official was asked, what is it here? Yeah? You are in name figures with Khashoggi, this kind of money. What is this? I would prefer not to talk about this. And our media says, okay, you need not talk. Because UBS, you know, if it is a small, uh, small time money lender in India, they would have butchered him. UBS, they can do anything. UBS, India Managing Director and Chairperson, Manisha Goetra, referring to all questions of, as uh, bank sports, for sports persons, as truly global entity, see the words they use, as truly global entity, our policy on such issues is to comply with the laws and regulations in each host country, while at the same time complying with the banking laws of Switzerland, which means I need not tell you whose money it is. We are very happy he has given an answer. Till today, this $8 billion, which is believed to be politicians' money, it is on record. The enforcement director and officials have said that this money, he, and it is reopened. Ali was arrested on fake passport case and was granted bail by Mumbai court on 2-1. Within 24 hours he has bail. In a fake passport case he has been here at least for 6 months. But the next day he gets bail because somebody wants to get him released. It was this which led to the raid on Ali. Ali is not traceable in Pune or Bombay. Suddenly Inspector Bhanu Pratap Bharge in Pune says, Following order from additional city police commissioner, Rajinder Singh, he had served a notice under 161 CRPC at a discreet location in Pune. What is the discreet location? He issued notice in December 2011. Then it was preparing to issue another notice in January 2008. Government told the Bombay High Court in February 2008 in response to Ali's plea for safe return of seas to parkport, Ali was absconding and if he left the country, the pro would collapse. Information comes to light in February 2008 that he and his wife applied for Swiss citizenship. Maharashtra police raids Ali's residence and seizes his passports. Ali flees with his wife and son immediately and absconds. He stays in Yusuf Lakravala's house in Mud Island. There, then he stays in the bungalow of Lonawala from July to October 2008. Ali tells the Mumbai police because the Mumbai police got at him because of this honest officer and he is inquired. The chief, the chief police, he met Ahmad Patel, Congress President's advisor, Chief Minister of Maharashtra, Maharashtra, Commissioner of Police and the Home Minister of Maharashtra in a hotel on 8-11-2008 when the enforcement director is recording that this man is absconded. Tell me, if this is the way you are going to pursue black money, which country is going to help you? Your government doesn't want it exposed. Now I will come to the next exposure. 
because we must know how, how all these things cumulatively work. I told you about the Western style of her. When they wanted to give the detail openly in an envelope, you could have used it in any manner. He said, no, 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 give it under the secrecy class. And to tell the court, we can't disclose it even to you. That means you want to conceal and not expose the offender. Then comes Swaisal Illustrate report of 11th November 1991. And later, Dr. Alberts, who was a uh, an operative of KGB, she wrote her experiences of KGB, in which the information that came out, I am going to read out to you now. Ms. Faisal Illustrate carried a news item that it had listed all the politicians who had stashed away money abroad, some 14 or 15, in which one Indian name figured that was Mr. Rajiv Gandhi who had been assassinated by that time. So the information was that 2.5 billion Swiss francs equal to 2.2 billion dollars. This amount is in existence in the name of the minor son of the wife of Mr. Rajiv Gandhi. This information was published by Schweizer Illustrate. Schweizer Illustrate has a huge readership. It is like an India today in India. This matter was not even raised. It was raised by statesmen first in 1998. Subramanian Swami, 2001. I raised it three times. I even challenged it that somebody should file a suit against me for defamation if I am false. Nobody did file it. that he alone, Eugene Alberts, a Harvard-educated journalist and acclaimed investigator, says in that above book, state within a state, the KGB and its hold on Russia's past, present and future. In this book she writes, a letter signed by Viktor Chebrikov, who replaced Andropov as the KGB head in 1982, noted, the USSR KGB maintains contact with the son of the Prime Minister, Rajiv Gandhi. R. Gandhi expresses a deep gratitude for the benefit agreeing to the Prime Minister's family from the commercial dealings of the firm he controls in cooperation with the Soviet Foreign Trade Organization. R. Gandhi reports confidentially that a substantial portion of the funds obtained through this channel are used to support the party of Rajiv Gandhi. Entire KGB record is available today. Tell me, which country is going to cooperate with you if people at that level are going to be involved in stashing away money abroad? So the issue is a very tough issue. The world is willing to cooperate with you today. And I am going to tell you something more interesting. There is a magazine called Corporate Insider in America. It set out the list of 20 politicians in the order of the money they have. The richest politicians of the world. Okay. Natalio Angulo, so is a German. Then John Kerry, you must have heard about his name, he is an American. 181 million dollars. Then J. Harmon, 326 million. Then Michael Negol, 380 million. Dara Lissa, maybe 700 million, all USA. Asif Ali Zardari, our neighbor, <laughs> one to four billion. And the size of the country, compared to us, it is less. That's why I am saying I will come to what is our figure. Net worth, 
वन टू फोर बिलियन रेसिड इन पाकिस्तान पोजिशन प्रिफर इन पाकिस्तान सो हाउ मेनी लैंड नंबर इंक्रीज इन इंडिया इन इन पुणे रिक्शा एनी वे मेन क्वेश्चन थी शुरू हो वन पॉइंट टू बिलियन रशियन यूक्रेन पोजिशन मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट इसी कैपेसिटी इज ओनली दैट मच एंड नई चुनाव नेटवर्क 1.8 पॉइंट एट बिलियन प्रेसिडेंट रशिया पोजिशन मेंबर फेडरेशन काउंसिल अपर हाउस ऑफ डूमा पार्लियामेंट सो हायर पोजिशन सो मोर मनी एंड यू वॉन्ट टू चाइना टू पॉइंट फोर बिलियन पोजिशन मेंबर नेशनल पीपल्स काउंसिल कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी सो हिज मनी एंडिंग कैपेसिटी वॉज ओनली टू पॉइंट फोर बिलियन Now I am saying, looting is not limited to any particular ideology. You must understand. <laughs> Now Sebastian Pinera, Chile, 2.5 billion president. <laughs> Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, president, United Arab Emirates. 4.5 billion position prime minister vice president of uae absolute monarch of dubai so he is entitled there is no difference between his money and government money <laughs> suleiman kerimo okay this will be 5.5 billion dollar president russia member Uh, upper house duma parliament he seems to be cleverer than the other fellow he is able to move, make more money with the same position who <laughs> yajun residents china position member national people's council a farmer journalist see <laughs> and uh, It's a woman, na, basically. <laughs> so, sex is also not bar to looting. Six point six seven billion. Okay. Hasim Aaron II, resident Liechtenstein, Prince. Seven point six billion. You know, it starts with poor Americans and going. Which is the poor country now? It's a big question mark. American population seems to be in millions. We are now progressing to billions. And uh, Silvio Berlusconi, Italy, and the man is a very colorful personality. All of you must be aware. IIT people, IIM people, many intelligent young men. They are very uh, knowledgeable about people like Berlusconi. I found. <laughs> So, seven point eight billion position, Italy member of parliament. Of course, he was also the prime minister. Mohammed, uh, sorry, is it ten? You know, now we go to eleven. Sergio Dassault, eight billion, France senator. Dassault is the chairman of the group, etc., etc. He has also some business to carry on, not just a politician. Zhang Jingo. China member National People's Council 10.8 billion. You follow some they have looted their country, sir. Outside all this whole ideology, this that nothing. Human beings are the same, irrespective of ideology. <laughs> Savitri Jindal from India, 13.2 billion. MLA in Haryana, of course. <laughs> Vladimir Putin, Russia, position Prime Minister, and he was also the President, and he is going to become President again. He only put somebody as President for some time. He was the Prime Minister. He will again become President. That is the understanding between the two. Because the Constitution says he should not continue as President, but it does not say he cannot become President again. So the Constitution is also uh, handled in such a way that. Uh, 
he can come back. 40 billion. Substantial. Khalifa bin Zayed al Nahyan. 18 billion. You know the United Arab Emirates president and also Emir of Abu Dhabi. Okay. Next. Sonia Gandhi. 19 billion. Well, why don't you ask this corporate insider, Baba, where did you get this information? Why don't you tell us? If it is wrong, why not this family file and defamation? The country is as silent as all of you. <laughs> the media has a self-censorship. They won't even publish these things. Only one poor newspaper in uh, Chennai publishes this, this is New Indian Express. This is not made in Delhi. <laughs> of course, there are more needs. I don't want to get into it. But all that I am saying is, it's a matter of very high concern. That black money issue, we should be tackled by the entire system with an iron hand as it happens in America. See, they will handle others' black money with a soft hand. But when it comes to their own black money, they handle it with an iron fist. But we know this is happening. Asana Ali 8 billion. Keep quiet. Not a word. And if you go and say we want to get back the black money and Supreme Court said you constitute this committee under the chairmanship of a former judge in the Supreme Court, raw IB, Enforcement Director, Income Tax Department, everybody should assist it. The government goes and applies for a stay on that order by the Supreme Court. What does that mean? You have to investigate it. At least somebody in the government is preventing you from investigating. The court is ceasing the initiation in its hands. It says, we will investigate. We constitute the committee. Let your department help. No, 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 no. This is the power of the government which has been taken over by the Supreme Court. You will not exercise that power. And because there is a default in exercising power in a matter of high national importance, which has security implications, economic implications, can go to the root of uh, the uh, republic itself and the Supreme Court steps in, no, 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 this is something which I am supposed to do, that I am not doing does not mean you can do it. <laughs> it's a very serious affair. No party other than the BJP has even taken up this issue. It is only because people like me, Ajit Doval, Ram Jetmalani, we put pressure. The system will work in every party. We have to work on every party which can do it. We have to put pressure. At least somebody who is the prime ministerial candidate has made a commitment he will do it. Whether the BJP is doable, it is a doable. We, uh, it has been put in the public domain by Dr. Subramanian Swami. We have consulted many bankers as to how we can tackle this menace. You know, you pass a law that all monies in the name of Indian passport holders will be nationalized and the Indian government will be the trustee of those funds. And all the people whose money it is they will be the beneficiaries. They can come and give account and take the money. We are not taking that money. You can come and give the account. Where did you get the money? Who gave you? And what business you made? Pay the tax and take the money if the money is genuine. You cannot find that money and because, because you have murdered somebody and you got the consideration for that or some other uh, drug transaction, obviously you cannot claim. If this law is passed, it will be a fair law. And you can ask the Swiss government, in fact, some facts about Swiss government I must tell you. 
there is no time. So I am concluding with this. So if you go into the Swiss government, I am the trustee of these funds. Now tell me all the monies which are in the name of Indian passport holders. We are not going to seize that money. They have got to give account to us and take the money. Swiss government cannot refuse to give these particulars. But we need one man to do this. In other words, if one man decides to do it, the whole country will be eaten. Nobody can speak against it. Because it is such a measure that nobody can even talk against it, including Rahul Gandhi. <laughs> even he, he normally talks against anything. He cannot talk against this. So you have to, somebody has to raise above everything and pass this one law. You know, 800 billion dollars of Indian money being stashed away means that much of invest, that is the GDP of India which has gone up. And already there is a 10% return every year. That is another 80 billion dollars which should be accruing to India, which is accruing to somebody else. This is the economic impact. And it helps the whole system. And viewers are concealing that money explicitly. And you know, somebody issued an advertisement in America mentioning these are the issues against the Congress president. And one of the issues was this Schweizer registry disclosure 2.2 billion. And a suit was filed for defamation against all the issues other than this issue. <laughs> you can understand. And in India, nobody, everybody is blissfully ignorant about these things. So I think something very major has to... See, all of you should take interest in these issues. The more people become aware, the more people begin talking about it, the more letters to editor is written. You ask the newspaper, why you have not carried this corporate inside a news item? Thousand letters go from, uh, from IIT Madras to the Hindu. They will think twice. We ask for nothing. An active, intelligent, informed, courageous, fearless public opinion can change the course of India. We have a very highly elite people, but they are more concerned about themselves, their little little interests, their novels, their computers, and the muck that comes out of it, the 70% of the computer is muck. 30% is really great. But we are lost in these piffles, trivialities. My appeal to you is, please take up this one issue of tracking this black money issue. You see, there is so much to be studied. Nobody to study. It's a day to day happening. There are at least a million pages of information available on this. Somebody should track German alone, somebody should track Switzerland alone, somebody should track uh, Africa alone. Tax Justice Network is there, GFI is there, World Bank, IMF, tons of material. Each one of you can take up one institution and come out with a position paper and circulate it everywhere. You know, electronic media and reach anybody today. Why not? My appeal to you is please take up this one issue only. And IIT must do something good in the next three months. That will be a request. Thank you very much. Thanks for the, the inside information, first of all. Uh, all information has been outside. Yeah, but <laughs> okay, so far I am unaware of it at least. Uh, two questions I want to ask, which are probably a couple. One is that the, uh, the working class people has to pay taxes about 30 lakhs to 1 crore. Those who have the income of 30 lakhs to 1 crore, same amount of taxation on that slab. Uh, which is 
kind of injustice to the people those who make less money, that's 30 lakhs, and the family makes 1 crore. Uh, how do you see that as a justification, as a taxation rule? Second question is then why there is a talk of abolishing the entire personal taxes. So how would that affect the economy in general? Uh, because that's the uh, next Prime Minister can do it um, and his team has talked about it. So I would like to know about that. That's all. But I know when he talked about it. Uh, his team. Uh, no, what he said is that we will... Uh, it's, it's been a national nationalized tax issue. It's been a based... Uh, uh, yeah, because uh, you come and discuss with me. Yeah. Because no country can in isolation do what they think should be done. For example, you have a transaction, bank transaction based tax. How will you levy import duty? And if China is dumping goods into India, how will you levy anti-dumping duty? So you cannot be different from the rest of the world. In the entire world, pass us into that more. Maybe you can do it. But this brings in a host of problems. I told him. Of course, there are people who think, you know, it is the simplest way, there will be no tax evasion. Nothing. 55% of the transactions in India are unbanked. What are you going to do about it? Have you studied the Reserve Bank of India figures of Indian savings? 10 lakh crores of Indian savings are in hard cash. Bank deposits are there, shares are there, very little shares. Jewelry is there. 12 lakh crores, hard cash is the savings. How are we going to tax these things? So, Abolition of personal income tax was a suggestion which Arun Shuri and me have, me have given when Yashwan Sinha was the finance minister in January 2001 on 19th, a decision was taken that we will abolish personal income tax. Corporate tax will be there. It is not this thing that you replace all taxes by the transaction tax on bank. Not that. We wanted personal income tax to be abolished. So that there is no personal generation of black money. Once black money is not generated at the personal level, much of the problems of India can be handled and the entire thing will transform into savings and bonds and stocks and all declared savings. This was accepted by the Prime Minister on the 19th of January. Why well, remember the date? It was reversed on the 26th of January because of the huge... Uh, earthquake which occurred in, uh, in Gujarat on 26th of January, then they said, no, the huge financial burden which will come, we will not be able to bear. At that time, the personal income tax contribution was very limited in the overall Indian budget. Today, it is very substantial. Unless we are going to find a substitute, the government will not be able to stand. For example, like the excise revenues of state government by liquor sale, there was a time when this could have been handled through other means. But today, the amount of money you are getting through liquor sale, the entire government stands on that. So it is not possible, even if the government wants to abolish it, it is not possible. So it's a taxation reform in India is a very serious issue. Unlike uh, Western countries in India, social security is mainly looked after by the family. Nobody's income belongs to himself or herself in this country. In all the Western countries where the taxation model is based on an individual, because he or she will not share money with anyone, except some Mother's Day or uh, something like that. On that day some gift may be given. Otherwise nobody shares any money with anybody. Wife maintains a separate account, husband maintains a separate account. But in India, every account is the same because everybody has a claim on your money. Your classmate will come and say, that I need some money, Dad. <laughs> it happens in our lives. That man from our village will come. He has a relationship with you. We are a relation-based society. So our taxation last must recognize the social relations, cultural relations, personal relations, male relations. If you don't recognize it, then there will be uh, evasion of taxes. So we are actually imposing the Western model of tax which requires to be very greatly altered. One government heard me at that point so I could emphasize this.
But in India today, there is no economic advisor, policy maker who can think for India. Yet they don't know India. It is very unfortunate. It is very unfortunate. None of these. India becomes superpower because the stock market is 20,000 points. How many of us know that the market capital is uh, Sensex companies contribute to only 1% of India's GDP? Just 1%. The financial world is selling the stock market. Last year, the Indian savings which went into stock market was 0.3%. It is like an IPL match. You are built to the ground for the farmers to come and play. Our stock markets are, this is what is happening in Japan also. Japanese stock markets, the Japanese are not playing. It is the farmers who are playing. Japanese investment into stock market is just 9% of their total investment. It is even less in Germany. <coughs> but do you know any of these things? So our policy makers know only English speaking countries because they speak only English. <laughs> in fact, when I address meetings in Tamil, I am celebrated because I am able to speak in Tamil. <laughs> Can you believe that in India, I am praised for my ability to speak in Tamil, in Tamil Nadu? <laughs> Sir, you spoke English very well. What do you know you tell me? <laughs> so we are glued to this. Anglican model. We are slaves of English. <laughs> that is one reason why we cannot think independently. You read that literature, that novel, that philosophy, that news, you eulogize them. It's a very serious issue. We all should collectively think about it. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the black money are con uh, constantly converting into white money and this, these black money are coming to India back uh, by taxless heavens. And also, these black money are uh, constantly convert, uh, converted in religious muds like uh, yeah, re religious muds. But uh, some of the string uh, operations uh, come out some of the three persons like uh, Ram Vilas Vedanti and Pilot Baba and other uh, Kirti uh, Maharaja. But these, uh, these persons still hold thousands of crores of money, but this money itself we didn't take, take to our Indian government. But how can you assure that we can take the whole uh, Swiss bank uh, black money and all? <laughs> because they are Swiss bank. They will obey the law. You pass the law. What I am saying is, there are two kinds of black money. The Indian black money is in India, it does some work. The money which has gone out of India is a more serious issue. I am not saying the money, black money operating in India is a less serious issue. But compared to relatively, that is a more serious issue. And the huge amount of money has robbed the nation of its wealth. And it has to be captured and there is a way. Many religious organizations are glorifying commercial organizations. There is no doubt about it. In that, you know, the amount of money religion makes outside India, that is very little in India in that sense, because religious organizations in India have been taken out by the government. Tripati is in whose hands? Bayani is in whose hands? But outside India, this money is only in the hands of religious people. You can't. Vatican runs a bank. Four billion dollar cash. So, don't blame any. In India, there is a much better control over religious people, particularly non-minority religions. And it's a fact. Tripathi generates 500 crore cash every year. And that is invested in government bonds. Uh, so, so the region of India are probably
even more law abiding than the religions outside India. Uh, so, uh, you have raised a very important topic of the uh, black, black money. Uh, and in the course of your lecture, you mentioned how uh, the BJP especially has raised this issue several times. And the current Prime Minister, Prime Minister candidate Narendra Modi has uh, given a commitment to be uh, tackling these issues. But my question is, the, you predict the modern economic theory and the neoliberal model of development. But isn't the model of development proposed by Mr. Modi or the showcased as the Gujarat model, isn't, doesn't it follow the same economic theory which you have criticized in your lecture now? And secondly, the, I think you left out well, some uh, names when exposing the corrupt, uh, which is the source of black money, like the former BJP president Bengaru Lakshman, who was caught on tape uh, accepting a bribe. And, and secondly, and, uh, the, 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 the Karnataka. Chief Mukama Kanadaka Chief Minister B. S. Hidurapa was with the BJP at that time. And yeah, so that's it. The last thing I will answer, I don't go after thick pockets. <laughs> See, we understand the model of development as one particular idea. It is financial capitalism which India has not accepted, which is the problem of the world. You make your country's currency convertible. You open the financial sector and the banking sector, then the model of development which is producing this kind of consequence will come into India in full force. <laughs> I don't think any party in India is going to accept this. I don't think there is any, including the Congress. Nobody wants that kind of financial capitalism in India. And the entire West wants this. This happened in Korea. In 1997, in the wake of the Korean crisis, the West forced the Koreans to open the financial sector. Out of five large Korean banks, four became foreign owned. Sixty percent of the Korean market capitalization went into the hands of multinationals. It has never happened in India and it will never happen in India because we have learned the lesson of not only 1997 but also 2008 and even the western institutions like IMF and World Bank have changed their economic principle that there should be no free flow of money. So the economic model which we are trying to pursue is minus financial capitalism. Let us be clear about it. In the, the more honest you are, the better results you will get. Uh, sir, uh, my question is uh, regarding NDTV. Uh, there has been recent allegations regarding NDTV and uh, the finance minister Chidambaram saying that uh, they laundered money to the tune of 5,500 crores. This has not been published by any of the major newspapers except Punjab Kesari from right, but in Twitter it has been running as PC words NDTV. And from what I understood, you have received some documents from NDTV and uh, you have been privy to some documents. Can you please shed some uh, light into this particular question? In fact, I read Enron saying that this whole thing is uh, wrong, false and defamatory and so on. Can you please shed some light into it? Thanks. And then, uh, then uh, Ponara should sell defamation case against me. The Ram saying it is defamatory has no meaning. He is a good friend of mine. But he wrote only half the document. I sent him the balance document. He has not replied. <laughs> anyway. See, this is a story which is running from 2004-2005. I have not come across an income tax commissioner of such high integrity and courage like one S.K. Srivastava who has gone about exposing in spite of all the pressure that has been put on him and two women officials were put on to uh, accuse him of uh, sexual harassment and he has been proved by before the Delhi High Court and the committee appointed he has never been there. <laughs> it's a huge fraud. NDTV 
annual has received 300 million pounds had received in 2006 and nobody will give even 10 pounds for NDTV. <laughs> And kept your money there without investing, without bringing it to India, where it needed it most. And for two and a half years, the money was only there. Tell me which investor will give that money for you to keep it as money, not invest and produce returns, except that you earn some bank interest on it. This is how the income tax department doubt started. Then they are here asking, please tell us who gave you this money. No, 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 no. We will not give. It's foreign company. And then they brought the money to Mauritius. That is also a subsidiary. London also a subsidiary. Uh, Mauritius also a subsidiary. And it is a subsidiary of Bombay subsidiary. Then Mauritius subsidiary is merged into Bombay subsidiary. Then Bombay subsidiary money came to NDTV. So the department asked, please tell us who has given you this money. No, 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 we have paid out this money. I mean, who paid you money to pay out that money? <laughs> and they published a balance sheet which showed 300 million dollar, uh, million pounds uh, liabilities due. After four days, price water was certified in a, the mind of that company for winding up voluntarily, you are supposed to give an audited certificate, there is no liability. And it tenders back there was a 300 million liability. The auditor said there is no liability and the company has wound up. The department said, please give us the details. This is the case. They are not being able to give the details. And the suspicion is it is a politician's money. And so a file was created that this particular officer is trying to trust this 5,500 crore number, how it came, I don't know. It is it was in the file. And so this man must be suspended because he is investigating his own finance minister. He was suspended. Then somebody said, sir, if you suspend him on this, there will be inquiry against you. Then the 13 pages from the file was removed. Another 13 pages that were substituted. Up to 13 pages, it is 5A. Up to 13 pages, it is 5B. So I asked the question, tell us, sir, where did these 13 pages go? In which these 5,500 crores is there? It's a very complicated issue, forging of the files, fabrication of government documents. So, um, Mr. Pranara sent me a letter that we have paid and he spoke to me also. I said, if you are, uh, because I had first investigated and circulated 30 pages and I sent him 30 pages of uh, my finding. It's a huge pile of about 5, 6,000 page papers. I, it took at least three months of my time to study and understand because it has been happening for over 10 years. So I sent him a 30 page note and then he sent his reply. Then I sent a counter. By the time the income tax department made an assessment of 900 crores to tax evasion on them. And they, these officers went and he said, I am going to give you evidence against NDTV. They went to the court to say these officers should not give you evidence. Then the court said, what is wrong? If he gives evidence, you cross-examine him. They give you a tradition and run away. So all this shows that they have something very big to conceal. This is what I have put in my reply. And nothing is happening. No media is willing to take it up because it is media. They are thick as thieves. Sir, uh, about a year ago, there was a news uh, about the person from Koyimutur. He possessed uh, US Treasury bonds worth six billion dollars. So uh, after an uh, after a week, they termed it as forgery. So do you have any information regarding that? I don't know. It is easy. Basically, the kind of uh, bond possession in India is impossible. This this must be some kind of a forgery or the bank. He must have been trying to cheat bank or whatever. But one thing is definite that the, uh, I don't find anything because I also made inquiries. It appears to be a very strange case of a man trying to project himself as a rich man. Otherwise, I don't. <laughs> you can always say, I am owning these shares in Reliance, 5 lakh shares. You can print the share certificate and tell everybody, you are happy and the other person is jealous of you. So, <laughs> some kind of like that. You know, uh, $101 trillion of American
Indian securities was seized from Japanese when they were crossing from Italy into Switzerland. It all came in a big news. Every newspaper carried it. At first it was said, no, no, this is not correct. And the news itself is wrong. And there was no security like that. That is the most uh, exciting part. Nobody could investigate from India. This case is not like that case. So thank you very much for uh, listening to me uh, patiently. Yes, yes. But please, don't forget what I told you. At least 10, 12, 15 of you to, to should take this mission of tracking black money. Oh, that is important. Uh, we are running out of time, so that will be the last question. Sir. Can, can we yeah, I am close to that. Oh, yeah, can we? <laughs> so, yeah, fine. So, that's a good question. Uh, dear students, just a few minutes. I think it's good manners to close it with a vote of thanks to the guest of the evening. Mr. Gurumurthy, thank you very much. It's been uh, quite revelatory, very educative. And I, I would say perhaps you've, you've thrown the gauntlet into the student community here. I don't know whether, um, perhaps I should say it's also an exercise for the faculty, you know, at least in the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences and the Department of Management Studies, okay. It should fall into our laps in some sense, because uh, what you have pointed out is uh, um, absolutely distressing for all of us, you know? uh, because this is, as you said, loot of the nation, one vote of the nation, and more importantly, you have also pointed out that it is not dependent on the gender of the person, it's not dependent on the language the person speaks, it's not dependent on the party affiliation, it's not dependent on the ideology of the person. So it seems to be independent. It talks of a basic animal uh, character in human beings, a different kind of an animal character. Thank you very much, sir, for this uh, kind of information, the knowledge and the passion with which you have delivered this uh, lecture. Thank you very much. I hope we have more opportunities to listen to you and learn from you, sir. Uh, may I request Professor Tula Purkara, one of our very revered professors, uh, he's retired now, Professor of Aerospace Engineering, who's done fantastic service for poor communities in the around IIT Madras, and uh, so please present the memento. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, students, thank you very much. Hope we'll have more of you in the EMLs to come. Yeah.